Hi, this is Donnie with IIS. I'm going to go over installing the Ethernet IP card into the Delta MS300 series VFD. This card will give you Modbus TCP and Ethernet IP capabilities on the same card. Installation of the Ethernet card for the MS300. This is the card itself. Two little LEDs which are going to shine through the provided cover. Net 1, Net 2. Came with a cable plastic pieces. So uh, first thing I'll do is just add this, snap this plastic piece on. Plug in uh, one end of the cable here. I've tried looping the cable, but it seems to do best if I just let it hang out the bottom of the drive. This is going to cover up the terminals, so you're probably going to want to make sure you got all your terminals connected first. Other end of the cable into the board. And then board snaps down. Snaps it up top there. Cover, just tip up quite high, drops in, snaps. To set the IP address, we're going to use a program called DCI Soft. It was a bit hard to find on the Delta website, but it's delta-americas.com and then the Download Center, which is at the top Service and Support Download Center. And then you have to put in Industrial Automation, Industrial Field Bus Solution, and Ethernet. And then you'll find DCI Soft for download. We're going to need the manual as well. Once there, industrial automation, inverters, AC motor drives, MS300, the MS300 user manual. To set the IP address, I'm going to use DCI soft. I'm running version 1.19. Just hit this little M button at the top. Seems to search the network. There's my card on my drive, a CMM EIP01. I double click on it. It should quickly come up. If your card has not had an IP address set or is on a different subnet currently, you'll get er several error messages and it will take a minute, but the screen will come up and by going to the basic tab you will be able to change the IP address. Mine came up quickly because it's already been set. Uh, I'm going to ping 211 over here in the window on the right. I will set the IP address to 211 and we should watch that as soon as I hit apply or shortly after we start getting replies from the drive. So I just moved it to a different IP. There's three parameters I care about if I want to control it with the communications card. Parameter 20 is where do I get my frequency command from. That needs to be set to an 8 for a communications card. 21 needs to be set to a 5, seeing I get my start-stop commands from the communications card as well. I'll go through setting one parameter. Enter, enter, up to number 20. I'm going to set that to an 8. I'll set the other one while I'm right here, C21, we'll set that to a 5. And then there is one other, 930, which has to do with how the communications are interpreted. So we're going to set that while we're here as well, 930, that needs to be a 0. That should do it. I mentioned parameter 930, communications decoding method. I'm going to use method 1. That's why I set it to a 0 for decoding method 1. It's a user manual. Starting on page 322 is the address list. 2000 hex is where I command starts. 2100 hex is where the status and read only start. I'm going to just work with 2000 and 2001 to do a quick demonstration. My test tool takes the addresses in decimal, so I'm going to convert the 2000 hex. That comes up here as 8192. I'm going to write to two consecutive registers. That'll be 2000, and also I'm going to send it the frequency command in the next register. 
uh, and I'll send it a 18, which should give me the bits I need to make it run forward and a speed of 5, 6, 7. If you watch the display, it went to 5.67 hertz. The indicator light in the top left that says run came on. And if I give that back to a 1, and heck, let's set the frequency to 0, you'll see that it goes back into the forward or the run light shuts off and the frequency goes back to 0.